Hey gang, one of the subjects that I've touched on previously on my little channel is how to make money if you're a landscape photographer. I like to keep it real and rather than making bullshit videos about how you can earn 100 grand a year taking drone photos with your DJI Tello or a put down a deposit on your first home by selling calendars, I prefer to tell you the truth. And the unfortunate truth is that like most non-traditional professions, the top 0.0001% of landscape photographers probably make a decent living out of it. But the vast majority will undoubtedly slave away for decades and earn less than they were paid in pocket money when they were 14 years old. There is a world of difference between making a bit of beer money from selling a few prints and being a full-time landscape photographer earning a decent living. And in that spirit, in this video, I wanted to tell you about my experiences selling landscape photographs at the local markets and more pertinently, why I no longer do so. I guess there comes a point where a committed landscape photographer starts attracting a bit of attention. They might build up a decent follower presence on social media, get noticed by local companies and tourist organizations, and become well known locally. If they play the game well and spend hours a day tending to their various social media feeds and pivoting to reels and shit, then they might even widen their profile beyond the local area. And it's about this time, as they start getting a bit of traction online, that well-meaning friends and family will say to these photographers, hey mate, your photos are fucking brilliant. I reckon you'd make a fortune if you sold prints. And the naive photographer will think to themselves, you know what, my photographs are fucking brilliant and I could sell them at the markets. After all, old mates down at the local showground the first Sunday of every month with his photos, and they're a load of old shit. Mine are heaps better. Many landscape photographers have trodden this road before, and there will be many more to come. Unfortunately, the simple truth is that the local markets are the last place you want to be selling your prints, and as a veteran of several years in the market's trenches and a recipient of the Berry Markets campaign medallion, I am more than happy to explain why. Allow me to paint a picture of the whole deal. And to kick things off, let's consider the actual logistics of selling at the markets. Obviously, the first thing you need is a decent selection of saleable photographs. And you need to decide which 10, 20 or 30 photos you're actually gonna sell. This is a surprisingly difficult process. The main problem is that what you consider your best work is often not what people actually want to buy and hang on their walls. You might consider a photograph a masterpiece with a strong composition, powerful leading lines and perfectly graded color balance, but it is not necessarily something that Lorraine from Engadine would want to stick on the wall of her recently refurbished alfresco dining area. Whenever I uploaded a photo to my Facebook page, I was often surprised by the photos that got the most attention. It was rarely the ones that I thought were the best. So I decided to use my Facebook page as a kind of free public assessment service. And when I chose the photos I would sell as prints at the markets, I used the 20 most liked photos on my Facebook page. So once you've decided which photos you're gonna sell at the market, you then need to determine what formats you're gonna sell. Are you just gonna have trays of matted prints in folksy pine boxes that folks can riffle through? Are you gonna to stick to modest sizes up to about A4? Are you gonna use decent frames or a job lot of $5 cheapos from Kmart? Are you gonna have a few larger premium prints on show? Once you've decided on formats, you can go out and get them printed, but you will have no idea how much stock you'll need because you have no idea how well the prints are gonna sell. Typically speaking, the shot you consider your best and which you decide to double the print volume for 
will be your worst seller. Meanwhile, the dodgy sunset with the blown out highlights that you only included because your missus liked it will be your top earner. Unfortunately, you will never know how well your prints will sell, no matter how long you do the markets, because what does well one week might stay on the shelves for the next three months. There is no rhyme or reason to it, and you cannot apply any real logic to it. So then there's the logistics of the stall itself. You'll need to buy yourself one of those portable gazebos from Bunnings. You'll need a couple of camping tables. You'll need some folksy covering to put on that camping table, such as a hessian cloth. You'll need weights to hold everything down. And you'll need a camping chair to sit in during the six hours the market is running for. Basically, Bunnings are gonna do really fucking well out of you. Once you have your infrastructure and your prints, you will have to purchase some public liability insurance. All markets require this of all stall holders, and this will cost you about $150 per year. You also have to consider how you're gonna take payments. And in this modern age, you'd be stark bollock staring mad if you didn't have some kind of electronic payment facility on hand, something like a square point of sale system. If you're gonna take cash, then you'll need some float so that you can give your customers change. Typically speaking, however much float you get, you'll use most of it on the first punter of the day. One potential roadblock you may not have considered is that the markets you'd like to attend may not actually want you. Most of them have rules about the number of vendors selling similar products. And if there's another photographer or two on their books, they might well tell you to fuck off. However, if you do get accepted, you should expect to pay anywhere between $25 and $100 for a pitch. The pricing of that pitch varies from market to market, but obviously the busier city ones charge a lot more than the tiny village markets in the old showground car park. So you bought your prints, you bought all your infrastructure, you're insured, you're booked in, it's go time. On the day of the markets, you have to get there about an hour before the gates open so that you can get set up. All of the veteran stall holders, the folks selling farm honey, spices, dog jackets, and wind sculptures made out of beer cans will cast their eyes over you, mutter under their breath in hushed whispers, and give you three months. They've seen all of the photographers come and go over the years, each one certain that the public will instantly recognize their genius and that their photos will be a huge hit. So you get set up and you arrange your wares. Now, if you're a bloke, and you have any sense at all, then you will enlist the help of a female of some kind because they will make your Bunnings camping table and hessian cloth look far more presentable than your ham-fingered man efforts ever will. They will swiftly transform your stall from Bunnings snack stand and into trendy boho emporium in about two minutes flat. Then the moment arrives. The gates open and the public come flooding in their wallets and purses overflowing with money. Try not to be upset that the punters are five layers deep in the organic soap stall next door and you're playing Wordle. Eventually, you'll get your first walk up. They will inspect your box of matted prints, tilting their heads slightly at every third print. Then they will smile at you and give you some faint praise. Then they'll go next door and spend 60 bucks on organic soap. You're desperate to make an impression and engage in small talk with the various punters that peruse your wares, but you'll quickly discover that the ones who talk the most are always the ones who never, ever buy anything. You will even miss out on sales because some 65-year-old bloke from the local camera club is regaling you with tales of his 1974 Yashica camera. And the lady who'd actually like to buy a print can't get a word in edgeways, and eventually fucks off. Several hours in, you check the takings in the old tin and pat yourself on the back because there's some notes in your cash box. So you take 20 bucks out to buy yourself a sausage roll and a coffee, and you return to your stall to eat them. Then you realize that you haven't even covered the cost of the stall yet, let alone all the other basic costs, and it's about this point that the doubts will finally start creeping into that stubborn head of yours. Later on in the afternoon, 
someone who follows you on Facebook will rock up to your stall and tell you how awesome it is to meet you. They will spend half an hour telling you how much your photography means to them and how wonderful it is that your photos pop into their Facebook feed every morning. And then they will say their goodbyes having purchased absolutely fuck all. Before long, you come to the realization that your biggest fans will never, ever buy anything from you, ever. Their love for you transcends anything as grubby as mere money. Then seven hours later, the markets start winding up for another month. The stall holders begin packing everything away as the last stragglers meander through the wasteland of the closing markets. The lady on the organic soap stand next door will ask you how you went and you'll say, oh, pretty good, can't complain. But the truth is that you'll probably make a loss on at least your first six months worth of markets, probably your first year in fact, because you're still playing catch up on all that capital investment, insurance and stock costs. If you apply yourself to the task and rock up at every market you can book a pitch at, Work all weekend in the twilight markets too. It might be possible to make a tiny salary from your efforts. But remember that you'll be sitting in a field somewhere all weekend and there is a cost associated with your time too. That's time in which you could, for instance, be out taking more photographs. What cost would you place upon an hour of your time? How about a whole day? What about a whole weekend? In case I haven't rammed the point home clearly enough by now, let me spell it out for you. Selling prints of landscape photos at the markets is an absolute mugs game. The amount of time, effort and money you will have to expend to become moderately successful at it in no way makes up for all the ball ache and wasted time. All that you have done is announce to the world with a megaphone that your photos are only worth a couple of bucks. People who go to the markets are looking for a bargain and perhaps some fresh vegetables. They are not looking for high-end artwork. They just want a bit of cheap shit, a pair of pliers from the old bric-a-brac stall and a caramel slice from the cake lady. The biggest selling items on your store will be the ones that cost around 10 bucks because that's the sort of money the punters want to spend at the markets. They want a cheap photo to cover up that hole in the wall of the downstairs shitter, not some highly collectible artwork from an edgy young photographer. You only get to charge proper money for your prints if you hang them on the walls of a proper gallery. And on that subject, some years ago, I got talking to a moderately successful photographer who at that time had his own small gallery in town. And he said to me, Andy, if you want to make money from photography, Plug your camera. Now, it is possible to turn this hobby of ours into a job, but the cost is high and it requires a lot of extremely unglamorous grafting and, let's be honest, a shit ton of good luck too. You could be the greatest landscape photographer since Ansel Adams and never get a look in. And meanwhile, goon swigging Halzo Robert Irwin's out here winning awards. Ultimately, you will have to balance an equation. On the one side, you have effort, and on the other side, you have profit. If the effort far, far outweighs the profit, then you will realize, as so many photographers have over the years, that selling prints at the markets is only marginally more rewarding than a kick in the teeth. Sooner or later, you will have to ask yourself the question, are you a market trader or a landscape photographer? Because you know what? it's pretty hard to be both. You'll have days when you sell most of the stock on your stall, you'll have days when you sell a moderate number of prints, and you'll have many, many days when you don't shift as much as a postcard and your gazebo will get blown away by a tornadic squall. Markets that you do well at one month will be a barren wasteland of missed opportunities the next. And if you're anything like me, you'll soon be giving some serious thought to pivoting from landscape photos into cupcakes. And that, my friends, is why I no longer sell my prints at the local markets. Now, before I wrap things up, I would like to add a small caveat. There is one exception to the market store shit show, and that is those markets that take place in the run-up to Christmas. Get a calendar printed sometime in July, 
and book yourself in at all of the markets that take place in the four to six weeks before Christmas. You could even get a small selection of matted prints together, but don't go mental. Sell your calendars with an attractive gift envelope of some kind, and you will find that they will walk off your stall. I can easily sell 300 calendars at the pre-Christmas markets, and I usually regret not getting more printed. People absolutely love calendars gifts because they're cheap, they're local, they're artistic, and they can be given to absolutely everybody without risk of offending them. Unless, of course, they're one of the local landscape photographers. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Have you tried the old landscape photo stall at the local markets? How'd you go? Are you eyeing up a new Maserati on your profits? Or are you only making enough to fund your cupcake addiction? Let me know down in the comments down below as usual. And if you enjoyed the video, please flick it a like down there, the old thumbs up. And if you got value from my content, please consider subscribing. There's a button just over here to see more of my videos in your YouTube feed. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.